Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. I think this is episode 90. Uh, today we're going to look at the May Marvel solicits for Venom comics. And uh, I obviously we already went over the big one, New Venom number one coming out in May by uh, Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman at, on art. So we already did a whole episode on that. So if you want to check that out, go back and watch that. Uh, I'm very excited for a new number one for Venom. Like I said, I didn't like the renumbering, bringing them up to 150. So to see something like this is, uh, it makes me happy because I think Venom should always have a number one. He should always go back to like his, you know, like like I said, I, I Venom's one of those characters that I would treat more like a TV show. Um, I would be like, hey, you know, it's season two, Time to do another, you know, issue one or episode one or whatever. So we already know about Venom, his new uh, storyline in the fall of, in the wake of the fall of Shield, uh, an, an ancient evil, a thousand years old, comes up out of the earth, and it's up to Venom and like other street level characters in, in New York to deal with it. Uh, so I guess Venom's going to be sticking around New York for a while. I was kind of hoping he would go back to San Francisco with the movie coming up, but it sounds like the tone of the book is going to be more horror themed and more sci-fi horror kind of stuff. So I'm interested to see that because Daniel Wade did a run like that with. Venom before where it was kind of like the movie The Thing but with Venom and I thought that was very effective and I liked it a lot so uh, anytime they do something more along those lines and try to fit the tone to get people in the right headspace for the movie I think that'll be good but I'm sure there'll be some superhero fun in it too. Uh, another symbiote we haven't talked too much about which is um, Carnage. Uh, currently in the Spider-Man comic he is being uh, bonded with Norman Osborn. And if you want to read that, coincidentally, I have an issue right here, uh, issue 794. This is not the first appearance of uh, Carnage uh, with uh, Norman Osborn. This is the first time they bond, though. So uh, I don't have the issue previous to this. I don't have a digital copy of it. A friend of mine gave me his copy. I have it back here, but he already used the digital code. So I don't have that digital code, I'm sorry to say. But this one, I do. I bought this uh, at uh, House of Secrets. And the digital code is right there on the screen. And if you want to see Spider-Man versus Loki, who in this book is uh, the new Doctor Strange or the current Doctor Strange, although that's changed already since the release of this book. Now Doctor Strange is back. Uh, but we have Loki here, and, uh, and there's a little backup story with Norman Osborn obtaining the Carnage symbiote. So that's for you guys. First person to put that code in gets it. And I do have the issue after this that just came out on Wednesday, and we'll give that code out in a, in a future video as well. So enjoy that. Hope you uh, hope you like that. It's really cool. So in Spider-Man 800, which comes out in May, Amazing Spider-Man 800, uh, Dan Slott and Stuart Eminen are joined by many of the artists who have made the last 10 years of Spider-Man so amazing. So pretty much every or most artists that worked on the Dan Slott run, um, you know, are all coming back to do something for this big giant size book, which is $9.99. That's a lot of money. But you know what? It's an 80-page book, and I'm hoping that it's Dan Slott wrapping up a lot of the loose ends, which I'm sure it will be. He'll, he'll probably leave a few things for the next writers to like jump onto. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Uh, I've, I've been liking his run, even though uh, he blocked me on Twitter a, a while ago, and I don't even know why. Um, but yeah, I still I still like the run, and I think uh, it's going to be sad to see him go. But 10 years, that's a long time on a book. And I think he's written some of the most fun Spider-Man stories I've read in a long time. And I've been reading Spider-Man almost nonstop for almost 30 years now. So yeah, that's saying something. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's coming out. That's going to be you know a big moment for Spider-Man, but it'll be him against Norman Osborn, who is now the Red Goblin because he has Carnage mixed in with him. And when you read like some of these issues, the digital codes and stuff that I sent out, if you get it, um, if not, go pick up the latest issues at your comic store, starting with 794. Uh, if you can find that one, and then 795 and 96, all three of those are out, and that'll help set you up for um, you know for the Carnage storyline that they're doing right now. Uh, the, other than that, there's Venomized number five with our friend uh, Bon Coella and Cullen Bunn. And uh, it's winner take all when Venom joins Earth's heroes in an all-out final assault on the Poison base. Uh, will a new ally of the X-Men be enough to turn the tide against the might of Poison Thanos? Earth's wa uh, warriors battle for not only the fate of the planet, but of the entire universe as they know it. Don't miss the conclusion to Venomized. So that final issue, because uh, Venomized 1-4 through 4 will be coming out in April, once a week. And then this will be coming out the first week of May. So we'll get the conclusion to Venomize, which I'm really cool of. Uh, cool, uh, and I'm really happy of. Scarlet Spider, I'll mention real quickly because I love the character so much and that book so much. They're going to do something with Mysterio's daughter in it, uh, you know, with, and, and uh, Scarlet Spider dealing with her after the events of uh, Damnation, the Doctor Strange story. So, yeah, pick that up. It's really cool. And the Spider-Gwen stuff finish, is finished with Gwenum by May. So there will be no Gwenum stuff in Spider-Gwen, uh, for those of you wondering. I think there's only like one or two issues left of Gwenum. Um, outside of that, though, the only other two things that are going to come out, uh, well, actually, 
sorry, I forgot about this one. Old Man Hawkeye, issue five, the Venom Madrix's strike. So if you've been reading Old Man Hawkeye, you'll know that multiple man from the X-Men, you know, someone who can multiply himself over and over, he was most of him, like he went as a gang of like five people and four of them were killed and one of them survived. And that Madrix got taken over by the Venom symbiote. So now when he duplicates himself, the symbiote duplicates too. And he's created a little Venom army and he's trying to get revenge on Hawkeye because once the symbiote bonds with somebody, it takes their hatred in too and mixes their own. And so since Madrix hates Hawkeye for killing his, you know, dupes or his brothers, his clones or whatever, uh, now, you know, Venom is like, let's feed on that. Let's go find the guy that wronged you and then you can help me, you know, kill who I want to kill. So that's uh, that's going to be big. The Venom Madrix is striking this issue. Uh, while Hawkeye fights for his life, Bullseye makes a critical move towards his own goal. That is, if the Red Skull allows it. So yeah, big surprise in there. If you don't know, in the Old Man universe, uh, Old Man Logan, Old Man Hawkeye, uh, this is a prequel to Old Man Logan. Uh, Hawkeye is starting to lose his sight. One of the last things he wants to do is he goes and sees his daughter, even though she hates him, but he just wants to see her one last time. As his eyes are going, you'll see him miss with a couple arrows from time to time, and he's uh, having to adjust. So he's got this long journey ahead. As we know in Old Man Logan, he does end up blind. He does end up uh, having to relearn how to uh, hit things without seeing them. So this is that story, and it's been really good so far. I'm digging the crap out of it. Uh, so yeah, and then outside of that, there's only two other appearances from Venom. Uh, one of them is actually because Wolverine is coming back uh, in May. They're starting to do that storyline where they're bringing Wolverine back. Um, uh, he's already kind of come back, but they're going to explain where he's been and all that stuff and how he's here and everything. Uh, but while they're doing that, they're reprinting those dollar issues of Wolverine. And remember I said I would talk about these storylines if they ever got reprinted, but I wasn't sure they were going to. Well, luckily Mark Marvel is reprinting Wolverine vs. Venom Tooth and Claw number one for only a dollar. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The bummer is, is that we you won't know if you haven't read the book before what happens in issue two or three. So I wish Marvel would have just done the whole thing. But typically with these True Believer things, they only do one single issue and reprint it for a dollar. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bummed by that. But you know, I'll at least read it, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about it on the show, at least issue one. Uh, but I'm trying to only, you know, uh, review and discuss things that are in print. So it, I don't want, if you guys want to know what happens in issue two and three, I'll tell you in the episode if you want it. Uh, but uh, so I'll, I'll make sure I put spoilers, you know, in that episode. So yeah, we'll talk about Tooth and Claw. Um, and then the last thing actually is, is something really big. So you know, I think it was last month, we talked about a giant Venom omnibus that's coming out in April. And it's like, a hundred dollars I think or maybe $125 and I think it's gonna be what I get myself for my birthday uh, my birthday's in May obviously uh, and that was what I was planning on getting for myself and it collects lethal protector um, it collects uh, you know I pretty much lethal protector all the way up until separation anxiety I think it's like literally like two years or so two and a half years of Venom comics all in one big hundred dollar graphic novel well as a precursor to that you know because I know a lot of you guys want some of these graphic novels out there if you'd rather them in big omnibus forms you can pick that up for like a hundred or 125 dollars and then in may they're releasing the spider-man versus venom omnibus and this is another big hardcover that pretty much covers everything everything from the first time spider-man puts on the the symbiote costume and uh, or at least in the amazing spider-man books which is issue 258 you also get issue 300 which is venom's first appearance um you get 315 317 which is the hydro man venom stuff uh you get the issues where spider-man leaves venom on an island uh you get the vault the avengers death trap vault where he kills the guardsman guard that we talked about which sets up the lethal protector storyline because that guardsman turns out to be treese's son um so there's so many things the trial of venom the uh this actually the spirits of venom uh, comic book that we just talked about in the last issue these four issues those are going to be collected in here um, there's also uh, Spectacular Spider-Man issues. All the Maximum Carnage stuff is all going to be in this thing. So yeah, I mean, it covered, this covers so much. Even the Marvel Comics Presents books is issues 117 to 122, uh, which, you know, I don't have in any other printed form, and it's not in any other printed book right now to review for you guys. So this will be somewhere you, where you can get those storylines because in uh, Marvel Comics Presents, they did some really fun storylines in there with Venom, with Sam Keith doing the artwork, and it's phenomenal it's so good uh, and then also spider-man unlimited one and two which is the beginning and ending of maximum carnage and then there's some venom subplot pages and some like previously unseen stuff so yeah this thing that's another 125 dollars and that will be spider-man versus venom hardcover and i am 
definitely going to try to get one of these so I could talk about it with you guys and we can do like full like you know multi-episode reviews or stuff and we won't go over everything in detail the way we did because we already did the discussions but I'll review it as a graphic novel as a hardcover like how it's printed how it's bound you know the specifics like that and then any stories we didn't cover before we'll cover it in that episode so I'll figure out some format for that and we'll we'll talk about them but these are the May solicits for Venom all these are coming out in the month of May for his 30th anniversary. I'm super pumped, and I'm sure we'll have more movie news coming out at that time. Maybe trailer uh, for the next Avengers movie. Maybe that we'll see the next trailer then. Um, you know, we had the teaser first, so now we'll probably get trailer number one. will be coming up next, and hopefully we'll get it then. WonderCon's coming up. I'm going to try to attend it for Saturday and Sunday if I can. I got those days off, so I will try to, um, uh, you know, report what I can. I'll vlog it for you guys, and uh, hopefully Sony will show up there. They've shown up there in the past. That was kind of their convention for Resident Evil. They would go there and show off Resident Evil footage when they were in San Francisco and then down in Anaheim. And now that they're in Anaheim still, I'm hoping Sony shows up and does something with Venom there. That would be super cool. So if so, and I get any wind of it, I will definitely let you guys know and I'll report on it and vlog all about it for you guys. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of these issues. Are you going to pick any of these up? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.